Hey yo! It's another Sunday review. You capitalize on what we talked about just this past Sunday. And this is going to be the starting of our month-long series of family matters and talking about different things in regards to our family and how we can love them more and when certain conflicts come up. So we talked about love and that love matters most in our families. Verses that we looked at were from 1 John 4, 7 to 11, if you want to look that up for more reference. And it talks about um, this idea of selflessness and laying down our lives. Hopefully we never have to actually lay down our life for our family members um, in certain situations, but we do need to do little things maybe in our daily lives that can help share our selflessness for them. So maybe we can do things like taking out the trash to show love or giving up the TV remote one night. Maybe you can bake some sort of dessert for your family as a nice gesture of love. Or maybe you can go out of your way to do another act of service or encourage a family member with a nice note or a verbal praise to them. Another thing that the verse references is how from God we can love one another. So in order to love our family more, we need to re remind ourselves of what God's love for us looks like and how we can show that to other people. We can't just love on our own. We weren't the first ones to think of it and show it. He was. We can see by Jesus' example on how to lead in love and from a place of love. Also, when things are hard and you feel weak and like you can't love that person in your family, God will give you the strength. He gives us his Holy Spirit to lead us into action and to speak when we don't know what to say. So remember that that is important. Selflessness is important in the times when you're supposed to love your family. Another big tool for things that you can do in your family is to pray. And the question I asked everyone is, how often do you pray? And there's no guilt or shame in here, but it's important to pray. How often do you pray together as a family? Prayer is huge. It can change things in our lives miraculously. And in certain times that maybe we would want it or maybe we wouldn't want it, but it's in God's perfect timing. It can help us think through things differently and it keeps communication open between God and ourselves. There's a Philippians verse that talks about how we don't need to be anxious about anything, but in prayer and petition, we can present our requests to God. So it's important that it can even help us change our mind frame on things, that praying and bringing our things and requests to God will really help us. It can help us overcome our worries and our fears. And I can guarantee that it will help you overcome those things, maybe not right now or in the way that you would like it, but it will help and it will be in God's timing. Prayer also helps us to release control over the people in our lives. It helps us to place trust in God's hands when we are worried about someone or maybe someone in our family is sick or there is a broken relationship or a past hurt or just maybe some financial issues. We can pray that God will be watching over those people and those individuals and that can help us not hold on to control over their lives and can trust God with that. Next thing we talked about is how we need to bear with the people in our family. And all of this stuff is a lot easier said than done, but we did read in Colossians 3, 12 to 13, if you want to look that up. We need to hold on to those we love during hard times and to not give up. We need to offer grace and mercy when someone messes up, because that's what God does for us when we mess up. Bearing with someone means that we go through the storms and the sunny days with them all alike. We can't pick and choose our family, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you think. But we need to remember that loving them and bearing with them is part of our duty as Christians. The world says to take the easy road, to do what is best for you. But God says to practice sacrificial love and to bear with each other when things get tough. So that's another thing we need to remember in our families, is to bear with them and help them in times of struggle. Another verse that we looked at comes from 1 Corinthians 13, 5 to 7. It's the very famous passage that Paul writes when it talks about love is patient, love is kind. Um, and we talked specifically about the part that says love does not keep a record of wrongs. And so this is another thing that's also easier said than done because it's really hard when someone has hurt us or caused pain 
or um, there's been a situation that has been difficult in our families. And so each person is on a different journey in regards to what they can do for forgiving another person and giving grace and mercy. So wherever you're at, just kind of self-reflect and talk to God about that. You don't have to be at any sort of certain place. It is good to point things out that aren't good in a loving and gentle way, but when we are constantly bringing up things from the past, holding grudges, or even keeping bitterness towards someone in our hearts, that is not fully loving them in the right way. Each person has hardships, and sadly, we have people that have hurt us. But I know that God wants you to not hold on to their record of wrong so closely. He doesn't do that for us. In fact, he doesn't keep a record of our wrongs because he loves us. And God himself is love. And therefore, he does that for us. So we need to do that for other people. Keep love at the center. Keep God at the center. And since God is love, he is what should matter most in your family. And keep praying and asking him for help and guidance for what is important. Here's the last couple of questions if you want to journal about them or just think about them in your own time in different ways. But um, here are the questions. Why is it hard to love your family or to be selfless? The next question is, how do you think prayer can help with your family struggles? Lastly, are you keeping a record of wrongs? Are you holding a grudge with someone in your family? And then the next question what positive things do you want to see happen more in your family? Thank you, and this was our Sunday Review.